not one, but five wines of the week for us this week. It's only nine or ten days till Christmas, and many of us will be looking for a really nice bottle or two to grace our Christmas lunch table. And that's just what I have for us here, a couple of whites, a couple of reds, and a lovely sweet wine, covering a variety of price points, but all perfect for Christmas day lunch or dinner. So we're starting with the whites, and the first one is something a little bit unusual. It's an unoaked white. It is the La Bascula Catalan Eagle White, a blend of Grenache Blanc and Viognier from the 2011 vintage. Now, I'm not putting the, or I'm not giving the prices and stockists for all of these wines, but they will come up along the bottom of the screen, and I'll summarise everything at the end of the video. So this wine's selling for around about £10, pounds, um, made by a South African winemaker, in partnership with an English MW in Spain, so all a little bit different, and blending Viognier with Grenache Blanc or Garnacha, uh, so quite an unusual wine in many, many ways, comes from Catalonia. On the nose, oh, it's delightful. I mean, there's no oak, no oak in this at all, but there's a nice kind of herby, oatmeal edge to it, quite a feeling of kind of uh, warmth and richness. Definitely some of the Viognier apricot and peach comes through in this, quite perfumed, but a nice lemony core to it too. And on the palate, mm, it's delicious, it's quite full, there's really ripe fruit, lots of ripe succulent pear and apple, fills the mouth, lots of fruit sweetness, but then lovely acidity coming through, really sharpening up the finish. Great wine for fish starters, for smoked salmon starters, and um, delicious in its own right. The second white wine uh, leaps up in price a bit, it's about double the price, but it's an absolute beauty. This is the Grey Wacky Chardonnay 2010 from New Zealand, and uh, this is made by a winemaker called Kevin Judd, one of New Zealand's best and most experienced winemakers, who established Grey Wacky just a couple of years ago to make his own wines after many years of being a consultant for some of the best wines in New Zealand. And uh, he is doing a terrific job. His wines have been featured here over the last couple of years and always to rave reviews. So the 2010 Marlborough Chardonnay, lightly oaked in French oak, but a beautiful nose, um, really, really, lots of spice here, lots of fragrance, lots of exotic, slightly sandalwoody notes to this, really quite intriguing. Nuttiness to the oak's definitely there, but there's a precision to the fruit beneath. And on the palate, it's gorgeous, it's weighty. There's a bit of an oiliness to it, there's a real Burgundian feel to this. But through all of that limpid weight of fruit, there's a rapier-like acidity that's running through it, really fresh in the finish, really tight, really well controlled, making it a wine that is deliciously easy to drink, but it has some body, it has some structure, and it has some drive. I think, again, would work really well with smoked salmon and starters, but could also match with the turkey too, because it has a bit of gravitas, a bit of weight to it, a bit of roundness as well. Cracking wine, the Grey Wacky Marlborough Chardonnay, 2010. Now, my pair of reds is an equally interesting pair, and I've gone Southern Hemisphere again, gone to the Antipodes, for um, two contrasting but delicious wines. The first one is from Mount Langi Giran in Victoria in Australia, a really cool area. And Mount Langi Giran specialise in aromatic cool climate grapes, the Rieslings, the Sauvignons, the Syrah. Uh, this particular wine, the Billy Billy Shiraz 2008, is selling for only around £8, £9 a bottle. Again, details at the bottom of the screen. And it is a beautiful wine, which I think is showing this terroir, this cool climate Syrah, really at its best in a very moderate price. On the nose, well, it's beautiful. I mean, there's eucalyptus and there's mint, there's chocolate, there's all those really ripe notes, but there's something quite earthy too, something quite peppery, like white pepper has been sprinkled over the wine, giving it that lovely Syrah lift, that cooler climate lift. And on the fruit, uh, on the palate, 
delicious cherry-like, kirsch-like fruit, hint of cassis, all of that real fruit brightness, finishing quite softly with very elegant tannins, but a bit of juicy bite to good acidity, a little tannic structure, meaning a really nice, reasonably priced wine that I think would go really well with turkey and would go with more powerful red meats. With, if you're having roast beef or you're having something like that, it would also match beautifully. But a cracking little wine, the Mount Lange Giran 2008 Shiraz from Victoria in Australia. Second wine's a big jump up in price, up near to £35-40, pounds, but it's from a classy, classy estate in New Zealand. This is the Craggy Range Calvert Vineyard Pinot Noir 2010. Um, it comes from central Otago in the South Island of New Zealand and it's an estate which rarely puts a foot wrong uh, across its range of wines. So this Pinot Noir from a single vineyard in a very good vintage has a lovely nose, little flower notes, little spice notes, quite lifted, quite elegant. But there's a lovely sense of something quite kind of beetrooty too, something quite earthy. Um, Pinots from Central Otago also always remind me of things like beetroot and rhubarb, that slightly vegetal note, which is a lovely characteristic of Pinot Noir, as well as having really good, really bold red fruit. And on the palate, mm, yum, dry, beautifully refined, cranberry fruit, racy cherry fruit, medium to light bodied as a good Pinot Noir should be, but full of elegance, full of succulence. It's a lovely wine. And again, this is heaven sent for matching with turkey, or you were having a smaller bird, a duck or chicken on the day, it would also do very well. And finally, on to my little sweet wine. Now this is actually a wine which has been Wine of the Week before in Wine Pages. It comes from the great Chateau Sudero in uh, Sauternes in Bordeaux in France. And Sudero released this wine a couple of years ago, the Lyons de Sudero, um, a kind of new, fresher take on Sauternes wines, not still fully sweet, still lots of sugar, still a dessert wine, but a little bit racier, a little bit fresher, meant to appeal more to a wider gastronomic kind of uh, matching possibilities, matching not only to desserts and foie gras, but maybe even matching with Chinese cuisine, with different cuisines, that's the theory. The wine itself is delicious. I really, really love it. It has, it has the classic Sauternes notes. There is honey, there is glycerin, there is a bit of orange in here too, a bit of marmalade. There's a lovely leaf tea note to it too. Delicious sweetness. Fills the mouth, medium bodied but rich, a little creaminess here, but a vibrancy too, a vitality. What I like about it is it's now available in half bottles. When I last reviewed it, it was in full bottles. Half bottles about 15 pounds, a little easier to get hold of and a classy and interesting wine to match with your trifle, certainly, to have as an after dinner drink, to have with foie gras or creamy patties as a starter, or to sip in its own. I hope you've enjoyed this roundup of um, five interesting wines for Christmas entertaining. I think they're all really good buys. I'm about to put a list of all of the stockists and the prices at the end of the video and I hope one or more of these will suit you for your Christmas Day drinking. My Christmassy Wines of the Week.